Dead Rising's Platinum Trophy is infamous in the trophy hunting community, not just because you only have 72 hours or 6 hours real time to get everything done that you need to, such as saving survivors and defeating all psychopaths, but also for one trophy in particular, Seven Day Survivor, which requires you to spend 14 hours real time surviving in a mall when your health slowly ticks down, and if you quit out or die, you're back to square one. The Platinum Trophy took me 52 hours in total, and I split into two main playthroughs as well as the Seven Day Survivor Trophy. The first playthrough was me focusing on zombie genocider and collecting random things like PP stickers and putting on all clothes in the game, just knocking out the random miscellaneous trophies. And here's the first 100 PP stickers we need to take photos of apparently. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, got our first photo group photo. First photo, first trophy. And with that first trophy down, we were locked in for the platinum. Most of the trophies I get in this playthrough are pretty simple, so I'll just blast through them. For the trophy raining zombies, I had to use an umbrella to push through around 30 zombies. And for carjacker, I had to kill some convicts and take their vehicle. And for the trophy self-defense, I had to defeat a psychopath. There we go. Self-defense. For the trophy Frank the Pimp, I'd have to escort eight female survivors around, and in the process of doing this, I could also unlock tour guide, which is just for eight survivors in general. Please, yes, we've got tour guide, and it's all seven women, or all the eight women here. Oh yeah, it came up at the bottom of Frank the Pimp. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Stress-free, mostly now. And then to get the final PP sticker I needed, I had to allow myself to be kidnapped by a cult. Missed it. Oh, get out of the way, please. Fantastic. There we go, PP collector. And then for the rest of this playthrough, I was just grinding zombie genocider, and I think it must have taken at least two hours of just doing this one path of killing zombies. Finally got zombie genocider. That took about two hours of driving and stuff parking area and all that good stuff so now we'll have the real mega buster for the main playthrough and with the time left i had on this playthrough i just cleaned up some other random miscellaneous trophies and then we finished that playthrough giving us the three day survivor trophy and then i was on to the main playthrough where we'd be focusing on getting the true ending of the game and most notably the saint trophy for saving 50 survivors and the survivors are pretty dumb so we got acquainted with everyone in the security room and picked up the mega man buster and we were tasked with saving brad okay carlito suit you made of made of glass we'll be seeing more of carlito later but for now we talk to brad and we strike up a deal as we find out that they're looking for somebody so we go with brad to find dr barnaby and he isn't in any mood to go with us unless we can guarantee him safe passage we had some time to kill now so we saved our first batch of survivors and i got to see how dumb the ai could be i then took some photos of kent for the first part of his side mission and decided to go take on my first psychopath of this playthrough i'd also need to photograph a fair chunk of them for another trophy later And a little while later, I unlocked the Marathon Runner trophy. We then see Dr. Barnaby on the CCTV being dragged away by Carlito. So we go with Brad to fight him once again. Both Brad and Carlito are injured as Carlito escapes. And we save Dr. Barnaby. So for Kent's next mission, I have to get a thousand PP erotica photo. So um, I'm going to do that. I don't know how to get medicine for Brad. And we went to see on supermarket to get it where we found the shop owner. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Pal. So then we got the medicine for Brad and I gave Kent the erotica photo for his second part of his quest. We'll see him a final time tomorrow. And then Isabella, Carlito's sister, was spotted on the CCTV and we actually saved her earlier from Steven. But before I went to do that, I took my merry band of survivors to save some other survivors by taking out Joe. 
and I also reached the maximum level in the game. And then I finally went to take on Isabella, who tried to run me over on the motorbike, but I put an end to that shit immediately. And afterwards, she told us to meet her later that night. And when we met her, we found that she was shot by Carlito, allegedly, accidentally. So, of course, we had to escort her back to the security room. These two are the most useless sack of shit virus I've had to transport, and one of them's gonna die very soon. Eventually, we made it back to the security room of her, and then we had some time to kill. So I decided to go rescue some survivors and take on the cult leader. And I got the census take trophy for photographing 50 survivors. And Dr. Barnaby started turning into a zombie. But he still managed to tell us about how genetically altered wasps that they were making in a lab caused the zombie outbreak. Once again, I had some time to kill, so I went to fight another psychopath who you could also actually save and make into a survivor, which we need to do. For and then Isabella told us about Carlito's last resort plan to blow up the mall so that the wasps could get out and infect the wider world. But forget about that because we're going to go and talk to Ken first and finish up his quest line. He was going to capture on film the moment that a person turns into a zombie and he was going to kill this guy to do it. So when we decided to put a stop to that, he got quite annoyed. Then I decided to go and find the bombs that Carlito had planted and whilst we were doing that he came and attacked us so we took him out. And Brad appeared out of thin air and decided to chase after him. Once we collected all the bombs, we put them onto a shopping trolley and I don't even know where we took them, to be honest. And then I went back down into the tunnels to find Brad. And whilst we did find him, he wasn't in his best state. So, of course, my natural reaction was to take a photo of him and then put him out of his misery. Isabella then tells us about a secret hideout Carlito had, which had a computer with all information on it. So we follow her to the safe house, where it turns out that she can't even access the computer because she doesn't know the password. So we return to the security room and we see Carlito on the CCTV being dragged around the maintenance tunnels by a butcher called Larry. Oh God. Oh. Oh no. Get me off here. Carlito died of his wounds, but he told us to give his necklace to Isabella. It was also here where I listened to the final call from Otis to get the transmissionary trophy. And I unlocked every character file for the full set trophy. We then returned to Isabella with the pendant, which allowed her to unlock the computer because she remembered the password from it. And it was at this point that the military started to arrive at the mall. And Jesse had somehow turned into a zombie, I think it was from the incident with Dr. Barnaby earlier. So of course I paid her a visit to take a photo of her for a trophy and then kill her. Since the military had arrived in full force, there was a few more trophies I could get related to them, such as this one for destroying a military helicopter. And this one for defeating 10 soldiers. Eventually the military left and it was quite cool walking around the mall without any zombies trying to grab you for a little bit. And so I made my way to the helipad to get picked up and, well, I'll, I'll just let it play out. And with that, Frank fell to his knees and we beat the game. But actually, we didn't beat the game because there's something called overtime mode. So Isabella saves Frank from being killed by zombies and tells him that somehow he got infected. And I don't know how because the numerous zombie bites I got through the playthrough obviously don't count. So if anybody knows, just let me know. And so we collect some items for Isabella around the mall so she can create the first sort of dosage of Zombrex, which she can give to Frank. And we escape the mall through a sewage tunnel where we find a car left behind by the military. And we have to fight their leader who is in a tank. Final boss time. Fuck! Fuck! Shit! Oh god, get off me, get off me, get off me. Did I break out of this? Ah. Oh, bugger, 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 bugger. That's not good, that's not good. Double Larry, what is happening? There we go. Oh. What do I even do now? Oh. Man. No, why? Here we go. Ow. I've got three nice muscles. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, that was close. See you later, buddy.
Got Unbreakable, which was for beating the game without being captured by anyone. Unlocked Infinity Mode for getting true ending. And go got Saint for saving 50 survivors, brilliant. And then it was time to tackle the infamous Infinity Mode, which I literally put off for days. Infinity Mode isn't even hard on its own, it's just what you have to do for these trophies. You have to spend 14 hours of your own life just doing nothing but playing this game to unlock the 7 day survivor trophy. But all you really do in infinity mode is kill survivors and psychopaths who are all hostile for their stashes of food. As well as waiting around for hours on end just eating their food until your stash whittles down to basically nothing and you have to search for more food. It's a very tedious boring process so I do not recommend that you put yourself through. The first trophy I got here was outdoorsman for spending 24 hours outside. There we go, Outdoorsman. Thank God that's finally done. And then I just repeated the process of waiting and waiting and waiting until I eventually got my next trophy. Please. Please. Oh, five days survival. The next trophy I got was Indoorsman, which I'm pretty sure you can guess what that was for. Ooh. Doorsman. Thank God. Just seven days, five left. Just there now. It can't be any longer than maybe five or ten minutes. Let's go. Here we go. It's moving slower now that I'm looking at it. Three, two, one. Now. Now. <laughs> now. There we go, seven day survivor. And then give me that platinum. We go finally the platinum trophy, bro. Get me off this game now. Kill me so I can unlock the laser sword for whenever I next play this game. Seven days and seven minutes. So that was Dead Rising's platinum trophy. It was probably one of the hardest platinums I've ever had to do purely because of that infinity mode seven day survivor trophy that took all the patience in the world. I'm just thankful that I never died during it. If you did enjoy, I'll leave a playlist to all my other Platinum videos here. And I'm also working for the Resident Evil series Platinums right now, so I'll leave a playlist of that here so you can catch up on all of those.